So pigtailing or pig symmetry is one of the very important attribute of a pig because this can have the direct influence onto the pig integration and hence onto the quantification. And that's the reason if you look into the general chapters provided by USP which is 621 or by EP which is 2.2.46 you will find there is a mention of a specific requirement for pig symmetry or pig tailing which is 0.8 to 1.8. Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte. I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub and as a part of today's discussion, we will try to understand what are the underlying phenomena because of which the pig get tailed and what are the symptoms one can look into the chromatogram to understand the appropriate corrections so that the pig tailing will get eliminated or at least minimized. So let us begin with the presentation. So this is going to be the structure for today's discussion. We will talk about the underlying phenomenon. We will talk about the respective symptoms and then the confirmation or and or likely corrections. So the first phenomenon we will discuss today is the wrong combination of sample and your column packing. Always remember whenever you think about selecting a stationary phase, first you must study the nature of your compound present into a sample. So if the nature of the compound is uh, polar, always go with the polar stationary phase. If the nature of the compound is non-polar, always go with the non-polar stationary phase. So it's just like a like attracts like. You always select the stationary phase with the same property of your compound present into a sample. So what happens in case if there is a wrong combination of sample and stationary phase, you will always end up getting a tailing to the highly retained compounds and because of this highly tailing, high retained uh, compounds and with the tailing you will have also lowered plate counts because of the suppressed peak height and increased peak width and uh, if there is an increased peak width always the uh, quantification for such a late eluting compound becomes very difficult and you may get compromise on to the recovery. So what actions you can probably take? Obviously, you have to change the column now. So, for example, avoid cationic or basic samples on silica columns. Uh, try ion pair chromatography or polar phases for polar ionized compounds like acids or bases. Let me give one example. So, in the chromatogram at the bottom, you will see that the alkyl C8 stationary phase is used and these two compounds are basic in the nature and they have significant amount of tailing especially the late eluting compound has a more tailing again there is a impurity present onto the tailing of the second compound which is uh, not having good amount of response and because of that its recovery can get compromised however if the same sample is analyzed onto the alkyl amide stationary phase you will find the pig tailing has got improvised and also the response for the impurity can be seen. So the recovery for this impurity can be better as compared to the last chromatogram. The next phenomenon is the mixed retention. So the band tailing increases with increase in retention especially for size exclusion chromatography or bonded phase chromatography and liquid liquid chromatography. Mixed retention you can think about the secondary selenol effect which also can be recognized as a mixed retention phenomenon. So in case of size exclusion chromatography, add high molecular weight polar compound to mobile phase. Example 0.1% carbovax. Addition of salt also may help in size exclusion chromatography. In case of uh, normal phase liquid chromatography, add a polar modifier to the mobile phase. Example 0.5% methanol or water also can be added. And in case of reverse phase liquid chromatography, use a buffer system to suppress the sample ionization or add acetic acid in for the acidic samples or ammonia for basic samples. And you can also think of using the end capped column. So these are the various corrections according to the mode of retention. And this is one example of a propranolol where uh, the C8 stationary phase is used in the first column, which is not end capped. 
However, in the second chromatograph, you can see a very symmetric peak because of the usage of the end capped column. Then extra column effect is always going to impact onto the peak broadening and uh, the band tailing decreases for larger retentions. So for early retentions, you will always have the good, um, good amount of peak tailing as compared to the late eluting compound. Then you, you can use the lower uh, inner diameter tubings to reduce the extra column volume. You can also use uh, detectors with the lower volume and you can think of using a col larger column so that you can have the large column volumes. So these are just the representative examples of what can happen because of the, the size of the peak, uh, inner diameter of the peak tubing. So the first chromatogram which is represented by A is a control chromatogram with a peak tubing of 0.12 inch. Uh, the second chromatogram is again with a 0.012 inch but there is an insertion of tubing between column and the detector. So there is a small amount of increase in the extra column volume and that has resulted into the further slight increase in the peak tailing or the broadening. And the third chromatogram which is chromatogram C where the inner diameter of the tubing is 0 0.031 inch and you can see how the peak shape gets uh, disturbed. Again, the uh, poorly packed column is very important to get the Gaussian peak shapes. I mean, the, the properly packed columns are required to get the, the symmetric peaks. But in case if your column is not properly packed, it, it can result into the peak tailing or peak distortion. What are the symptoms? The band tailing is similar for all bands for all samples. So you will have the similar kind of pattern for all the peaks. For early eluting and late eluting, you are going to see the similar kind of the peak shape or the peak tailing. What is the what you can do now? As the column has been uh, found to be uh, the bad, you cannot use this column for further analysis. You can return this column or discard the column. So this is the pattern you can think of the poorly packed columns. So there are similar kinds of pattern for all the peaks. Then unbuffered systems. In case if you are analyzing ionic samples like acidic or basic compounds, the pH of the mobile phase is certainly going to impact onto the ionization of the compound and further that can influence the peak shape or the peak tailing. So tailing of acidic or basic samples are generally get influenced because of this unbuffered system. In case you do not have the pH for the mobile phase, you can also get the tailing because of this unbuffer systems. So what corrections you can do? Buffer mobile phase or add formic acid or triethylamine to mobile phase for ion suppression. The first and foremost you try to have the mobile phases with the appropriate pH. And in case of uh, you want to add some additives like formic acid and triethylamines are generally suitable for uh, in improvising the peak tailing. Formic acid can be added for acidic compounds and triethylamine can be added for the basic compounds. So in the absence of buffering, the degree of sample ionization varies with sample concentration. As sample concentration varies across the sample band, the degree of sample ionization then also varies across the sample band and this can result in either a fronting or tailing band depending on conditions. So that is the underlying principles why the pig get tail in case if you do not have the appropriate pH control and this is going to become much severe in case if your compounds pK is just equal to the pH. And here is the representative chromatogram on the screen now. So chromatogram B belongs to a mobile phase pH just equal to pK of the compound and just assume that this is the acidic compound. Now what is the chromatogram uh, A represent? The pH is much less than the pKa. So in case if you have the acidic compound and if you maintain the pH less than pKa uh, minus 2, your acidic compound is going to remain into the non-ionized or non-ionic form. So that way you will not have the pig tailing. And same is the case for basic compound also. In case if you have the basic compound, always maintain the pH higher than 2 units from its pKa. So pKa plus 2 is good for the basic compound. And the last phenomenon that we are going to discuss today is the sample solvent effect. 
we all know that the sample dilute event is very important as per as getting the symmetric peak so in case if your sample diluent is stronger than your mobile phase you are going to have the peak distortion or the peak tailing so sample dissolved in solvent that is stronger than the mobile phase is the symptoms and in case if you are having such kind of uh, a peak tailing out of this uh, stronger diluent as compared to mobile phase the first and foremost you can decrease the volume of sample injection or you can uh, redissolve sample into a weaker solvent so this is just one representative example of caffeine and uh, salicyl amide analysis where in case if you use the 100% acid you can see both the peaks are distorted or at least tailed but in case if you use the mobile phase as a diluent then these peaks are having a symmetric peak shape so thank you so much for your attention and uh, in case if you have any another reasons for peak tailing please put into the comment box below bye bye